American Horror Story is one of my favorite shows. Not the reality show, but, <laughs> but the show by Brian Murphy. <laughs> and we have, um, we have one of the big stars here today, and she doesn't play the role of salt, she plays the role of pepper. <laughs> and that's Naomi Grossman. Naomi Grossman. Yay! Oh my God. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <sighs> Hanging in. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, that's probably been used before the salt and pepper thing, hasn't it? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I've never gotten that. As I know it's sticky, but. I felt being like a little sticky. L'chaim? Well, yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger ale. Sure. So, listen, I want to first tell you thank you for all that you do for Meet the Biz and Performing Arts Studio West. You are, have been so supportive and loving throughout the years, and you are seriously a part of our family. So, oh. thank you for that. Thank you. That's... Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, everybody loves when you come into the room. It's like, oh, it's Naomi's here. Oh, you know? that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And now you have created a character that is now truly in the history books as one of the most memorable uh, characters in TV history, uh, Pepper. How did you get that role? Well, it was a audition like any other. Um, you know, my agent called and said, you know, you've got to audition tomorrow. Uh, the breakdown, uh, as folks know, of course, uh, that goes out to all the cat, all the agents and managers in Hollywood, um, was simply a four to five feet tall, possibly malformed, childlike actress um uh which of course is uh sort of me i'm i'm a whopping five feet tall so i barely slipped in um uh you know i i am an actress uh i can play childlike and you know uh i i'm not malformed uh but you know at the same time i got the audition so you gotta figure like it's not my job to cast right like right. if that were a deal breaker then I wouldn't have gotten the audition to begin with so um you know you just go in and you do uh what you can do with what you've got and don't worry about what you don't um the audition itself consisted of a um a, a monologue of Jessica Lang's from season one oh. as well as an improv um in which they gave me a ball and asked me to try to get them to play with me. Of course, none of this meant any, made any sense to me at the time, especially because there was no mention of what Pepper was. Like there was, there was no, you know, pinhead or microcephalic or, you know, any of those sort of like buzzwords that would give me any kind of indication of what exactly they were looking for. Right. All I had was, childlike that was as much as i got so when they gave me the ball they said try you know play it as if you were a four-year-old trying to get us to play with you uh and then for the monologue that that they wanted pretty straight they that was um and you know at the time i thought what in the world is this yeah uh it wasn't until obviously when i was on like <laughs> when I was actually in it, doing it, I realized, oh, they they just want an actress with range. They need someone, uh, like an extreme character actress uh, with some improv background who can um, play, you know, do the, the physicality of these, you know, the, the dichotomy of the, 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 of what Pepper ended up being, which was, you know, the early, um, uh, sort of simpleton Pepper, uh, and then of course the alien abducted uh, Dr. Pepper. Um, so, uh, um, you know, I, I, 
but I didn't know that going in. All I had was uh, the very limited information that, that they provided me with. But, you know, that was as much as any, anybody had. Right. So, I mean, that's the good news is that it's uh, this leveling of the playing field. We all come in with the same, um, you know, limited information. And you do with, with it what you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, was, that was the initial audition. The, the callback was basically a meeting with makeup. They um, had me, and as well as a f several other actresses uh, that they um, initially had in mind, you know, that they knew could handle the demands of the role. They had us come in and they actually shot a bunch of photos of us, profiles, um, and then later manipulated those images to see what we would look like with that, with the makeup. Oh, wow. and with the ha hair and everything, head and yeah. So you know, I they actually instructed me to you know pull back your hair. I had longer hair at the time, pull back my hair in like a little ponytail, and they actually suggested that I you know sort of slouch. Again, I had no idea what they were going for, but um, since then, of course, I've seen photos of it, and I can see you know the original Naomi, and then the side by side with uh, you know what they ended up. Uh, manipulating my image to look like and uh, you know it, it's something I like to remind myself of because you know as actors you know we tend, tend to be vain and oh I don't you know my bridge of my nose for all we know my bridge of my nose got me this part that right. ultimately changed my life. Um, I don't know. I just know that, you know, Ryan Murphy and uh, the decision makers around there took a look at these, you know, couple actresses and thought that, you know, my profile looked best. Yeah. So, so there's no, there's no, uh, there's no such thing as like the right nose. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you can look at, uh, Desperate Housewives or whatever and say, oh, I, I like her nose. But um, for all you know, like your nose might be the right nose after all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have to say the nose is one of my favorite part of the body. I, I just, oh. I, I love noses, you know? So, and you have a beautiful nose. Did this conversation just take a strange segue? Yeah, listen, it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to decide, like, how I feel about that. Dude. Is David nope. into noses? Noses. <laughs> is that? Did you? Did no? I mean, you brought up your nose. I, I will say, during these COVID times, um, apparently the governor of Colorado, which is my home state, yeah. posted on his website that when you wear your mask like this, it's like wearing your 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 underwear like below the you know what i saw that <laughs> pretty no. hilarious whenever i see someone out in public with their nose out all i can think of them is with their pants you know with their boxer shorts below their you know what yeah oh my god i didn't know that was the governor who posted that yeah oh i love him who is this guy he needs to be by me <laughs> Talk about the aliens. I think they're here already, <laughs> and hopefully they'll save us. <laughs> oh, my God. I agree. Yes. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> um, I have to say, there was an episode uh, from American Horror Story uh, in Freak Show hmm. that I thought, I thought, this woman is going to get an Emmy for this. I mean, it was so emotional. It was so amazing. I mean, it was the Pepper episode, and I still think, for me, um, it has turned into one of my favorite episodes of all time oh. in, in TV history, just because that episode, you were so, not that you weren't in the other ones, but you had, it showed so many levels to you, and when you started just getting emotional, I think about it, and I, I get all verklempt. <laughs> was love at first sight. Play with me. Play with me. Pepper! Can you really feel sorry for you? 
yourself. I need to get you out of this thing. I have to put you in a decontamination shower. What you did, that's one of the worst ever things I've heard. Maybe in my whole life. Made me throw up. Actually, throw up. Well, um, you know, uh, I think, I mean, that's, thank you, but it's a lot of it's the writing, you know, they really gave, they gave me a, a, a story, <laughs> uh, because up until then, let's face it, um, I mean, I wasn't background, but I was, for the most part, I was there, I was one of the freaks, like I was, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, again, when I say human prop, it makes it sort of belittles what I what I, my my role in the show but um you know for the most part i was there to deliver the fat lady food and um you know uh uh play with string in the background like that's that, that was part of it um well you know, and, you know, was, and it does show there are no small parts right in the show because you never know when it's gonna go <laughs> but i mean you to me you were never you know. Well, thank you. I did always wonder, like, gee whiz, they've gone to all this trouble to bring this character back. You know, it's kind of breaking all the rules as far as, you know, we, we hadn't seen a, a character return before. And, um, you know, and what does this mean for Emmy contention, you know, whatnot? Because let's face it, they were in the limited series category. They're not anymore. Now it's a drama, blah, blah, blah. So I always felt like, huh. It, it seems to me they wouldn't go to all this trouble that to, you know, break all the rules, their own rules, no less, to have me back only to, you know, you know, be singing and dancing in the, in the deep, deep background. Um, so I, I did feel like they were going to, you know, justify my being there at some point. But, you know, it took it. That was season, that was episode 10 when that, that storyline finally came around. So, you know, they made me work for it, that's for sure. Right. But I think, you know, um, to your point, uh, let's face it, like, <laughs> Pepper is, um, you must use Pepper quite sparingly. Uh, or you don't have to, <laughs> but um, not that I... Uh, Listen, I'm no, I'm no culinary genius by a long shot, but I do know that a little bit of pepper goes a very long way um, to, uh, to, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, what I mean is, you know, they were very, if you watch the show kind of critically, you'll see that, um, uh, she they they intersperse her in these very like strategic places yeah. uh prior to that 10th episode um mostly because she is such a like kind of a, a sh like the shock factor they'll they'll cut to her these like and um and it, it was almost like they would like use her editorially as um kind of a punctuation uh mark uh whereas finally for that last episode you're absolutely right they really kind of let her breathe and she wasn't just a quick cut to bam you know but rather a, 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 a um, uh, um what am i trying to say fleshed out yeah, we, we really got to uh, see her. She, was, she wasn't a, a supporting player anymore. She was yeah. in the spotlight. And it showed how such a loving human being she was. And yes. Um, not that it didn't before, but it really, you know, you can identify with her. You can identify with the pain and the ups and downs. Well, I think that's what's so genius about so many, I mean, so many of Ryan Murphy's characters is they are never what they seem. Yeah. You know, they're all multifaceted, just like we are, you know, no one's all good or all bad. I mean, it, you know, you look at the administration and you think maybe that's not true, but the fact is like, we all have um, you know, we're, no one's pure evil, no one's pure good. Um, you know, you look at Pepper and if all you get is uh, the, the artifice or the, the, 
you know, then you might, I mean, people were initially scared of her or initially, you know, had all these misconceptions. Oh, she killed her, murdered her sister's babies, cut the ears off, whatever. Right. It wasn't true. It, yeah. None of it was true. It wasn't until we actually got that episode to really kind of see her backstory that we could actually um, understand what what else was in there. Uh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Naomi. Yes. What is your joy? Oh. <sighs> well, I mean, I. Ah. I, 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 I don't want to be cliche like actor and be like acting, <laughs> but I really, I, I think disappearing into other, others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, uh, uh, I think, um, being, yeah, I think I, I like, I, I like to be someone I'm not. <laughs> right. uh, I like to uh, get dressed in the morning and uh, something I haven't done in three, <laughs> three months, but you know, decide like, who am I going to be? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and, and decide like, am I, am I boss Naomi in a, in a power suit or am I, you know, rock and roll Naomi with black leather. I think I, I enjoy like playing a role. Um, uh, but by that same token, I like, um, you know, uh, uh, I like stories. I like, um, I, I find myself in life, um, often if I'm, I'm confronted in a, with a path of like, oh, should I go, you know, uh, the easy way that is probably going to work out for the best or this other way that might end totally disastrously. <laughs> I don't recommend it, but I will choose the, the left uh, because I want to see how that story ends. Yeah. I, I love a, an adventure and, um, and I, yeah, I, I like to have a, a, a story for the cocktail party. Right. And, and like that it's, at the end of the day, it's been to my detriment. I mean, let's face it, I'm, you know, single <laughs> probably because of it. You know, ha I could have probably um, gotten married and had 2.5 and a half kids and golden retriever with a white picket fence and lived happily ever after a long time ago. Yeah. But ultimately, I chose the this um, slightly a more convoluted detour that took me on a whole lot of madcap adventures and I have no regrets for it. So, um, and you're living a happy life as an yes. artist. Yes. Yes. I think, you know, let's face it. That was not my path. My path was this slightly more, uh, circuitous, if not totally <laughs> dead end detour, but well, no, I, wouldn't I don't say think that. Uh, I just mean, yeah, no, I, this, uh, let's face it, um, happiness is not necessarily what society has right. you know, decided and, for. And thank you for saying that because, you know, being in quarantine, I'm here alone in my yeah. little bedroom apartment and I'm going, you know, I, luckily I have a bunch of, of these lovely cuttables. Yeah. <laughs> this I got from D. Wallace. Oh, that's so nice. Isn't it great? Yeah. I love it. I've been to your one bedroom apartment and I it's lovely. So Thank you. Yes. Well, I got rid of 40 of the boxes, but we won't go into that. <laughs> so, it's a little what more about that hub? Is it still open during COVID? Well, it was closed for about a month and then they reopened the roof, but the hot tub is a cold tub. Oh. So they're not, it's not open yet, but. Well, it's getting to be hot outside. So maybe you'll appreciate that cold tub soon. Listen, when, when quarantine is over, we're going to have some wine, cheese, and a hot tub again. Yes. I'm all <laughs> for all of the above. Oh my God. 
So you were talking about how you love to get into different characters. Yeah. Like Samantha Crow. Mm, yes. Yeah. Which is another thing of what Ryan Murphy has been doing with this show about, you know, changing, like you get several characters on these shows. So that's, I love that. So it's an interesting story about that, which, you know, a lot of people don't ask about her. Uh, so I'll tell you. Um, first off, I knew I was coming back early, like maybe March, and we didn't, you know, they don't start shooting till like July. Yeah. Uh, and yet I didn't know um, what, I didn't know even what the season was, never mind the character. Um, so, you know, I was watching you know, the trades and Facebook and everything else, just like anybody, any fan. Yeah. Um, and, you know, was excited to hear about Apocalypse. But even then, like, who knows? That could be anything, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so it wasn't until, I want to say, yeah, I knew we were, like, we, meaning the show was starting in July, but I didn't know when I would come around. I think they didn't actually bring me in until, like, September, which meant I had all of... July, August, and September to kind of steward, like, oh, when am I, am I going to work? You know, we all know how long three months feels. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're waiting for a phone call to work. Um, so, uh, you know, it, you know, waiting, waiting. Finally got the call and, um, you know, you're working uh, in a couple days, uh, the role is, and it, it had a different name, um, and, uh, you know, they gave me just the pages that I was in, unlike the uh, freak show, they would give me the entire scripts, which was helpful, yeah. um, whereas this was just like, it was just my lines, so I was, again, deal working with very limited information, and again, the show wasn't even on yet, so I couldn't even watch, I didn't know, I didn't know anything, um, so, uh, but I, you know, I'm, I, you, you work with what you got. I Googled the name and it, it turns out this character, not Samantha Crow, but rather this other name was a, 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 a famous Satanist in history. She was a real life, um, uh, like socialite from New York City who was the, uh, married into the satanic church. And anyway, it was a, a really interesting. And I, I, again, as the consummate sort of character actress, I'm thinking, ooh, who is she? Like, this is somebody I can really delve into. Yeah. And, and so, um, unfortunately, there was no real um, footage of her. So I, I wasn't able to really... Um, you know, I wasn't mimicking anyone. It wasn't like schlitzy with Pepper. Um, but I could imagine, oh, socialite. Okay, so maybe she holds herself a certain way or has a certain air about her, um, which I sort of uh, took on. But then it wasn't until the day before when I was in my fitting uh, that I asked, you know, I was asking the, the costumers, like, certain character information and they said oh no 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 no! you're not her anymore if as it turns out since she was a real life person in history like if you were her we'd have to fit you for prosthetics and like you're you're much too young to be her like she would be 80 years old by now so it, it we it, you're not her you're this other person samantha crow okay. and i was like, samantha crow who's that like what what do i do with that yeah. So as it turns out, I mean, it, it was good, bad, good news and bad news. The the bad news is I I wasn't whoever I thought I was, right. uh, and of course now I had less than twenty four hours to figure out who I was. The good news is I could be whoever I wanted at this point. There was no specifications. So I think in my mind, I because I there was there was no limit limit um and i was no longer trying to be this person whoever that was right. i um uh i uh it was open ended and i did whatever i wanted which i ultimately i don't know if you got this but um i kind of used that old lady from poltergeist as my muse oh. so do you remember her yes <laughs> look to the light carol Ann. Um, so that's what I was kind of going with, um, which, 
it's very subtle, you know, especially because I don't look like her and my role was quite small and, and not only small in the size of it, but as a character, you know, uh, unlike Pepper, who's quite a, you know, over the top character, right. uh, uh, the, the Samantha Crow is much more subtle, looks like me for, yeah. for that. Um, anyway, I, uh, but that's kind of what I had going on underneath. I love it. For what it's worth. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to know that there's, even with these small roles, there's, there's a lot more to it. There's a history. Sure. I mean, one line. I mean, I had one line in Meet the Fockers, and I write. Oh, I, oh, I wrote the day we was born to that day. Well, let's face it. Your one line in the Fockers. What's his name? What was his character's name? Dom Fucker. <laughs> Dom. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> but listen, Dom. Dom has a whole life, right? Dom. <laughs> came from somewhere he grew he was born on a day and he grew up in a family in the Fokker family and he went to school and maybe he got married had a few kids like he was he had a life independent of his one line exactly right? It, it may be that in this particular, you know, film, we only see one line of his, but maybe in another a sequel, uh, it's Dom's story. I know, and, it, Dom Fokker. Yeah, Dom <laughs> Fokker. I don't That's know why we part. haven't seen this as a sequel. It sounds amazing. I think it's great. And I laugh so hard, too, when you said that, because that's exactly what De Niro said after I said, hi, I'm Dom Fokker. And he said, <laughs> Of course you are. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. Well, but you know, but I think again, it's a good lesson to actors that um, just because all you say is, you know, want fries with that, or you know, scalpel doctor, that you know, g give it. Uh, what is that waitress doing before? Or what is she doing after? What is she? Uh, it, What's her deal? What did she um, just have to eat? Is she constipated? You right. Know? What, right. You know, did she have a date last night? Totally. All of that is going to uh, influence how she says her one line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, I have all these amazing, wonderful questions. Um, I, I, and I know we only have a certain amount of time, but you create your own one woman solo shows yeah short films i mean you write you produce you star in um i mean how important do you think that is for actors to do mm -hmm. 